Hey, welcome back to Prepping with Sarge. Today we're going to talk about six crops that I think all preppers should be growing. Stay with me now. All right, thank you so much for staying with me. This is Prepping with Sarge, where we talk about all things preparedness. We talk about financial preparedness, financial survival, growing your own food for food self-sufficiency. We talk about wilderness survival, foraging for edible plants, medicinal plants. We talk about knife reviews, product reviews of products that I think preppers would like. And we are very, very glad to have you here. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. I drop videos twice a week, at minimum twice a week. And if you're returning to the channel, uh, please consider dropping a like. It really helps me out. I'm trying to push up in the algorithm and I really, really need your help with this. Let's do a comment of the day. What's a crop that you have not tried to grow that you would like to grow? If you if you could, like if you had your choice, what's something that you'd like to grow on your property, all right? And let's do a little shout out today for two channels that I really, really love. These are dear friends of mine. Uh, Adrian and Nico is two guys that they do fitness fitness workouts. Uh, they really, really bring the energy, get you motivated to get you back in shape. A lot of the stuff that they do is outside. Very, very little equipment is needed to participate. Uh, these guys are awesome. They have been a huge friend to my channel for a long time, and I've been a friend to their channel. So check out Adrian and Nico. Of course, I'm going to put a link down below in the description, and, and I'll try to pin one in the comments too. And if you head over there, tell them that Sarge sent you. And next shout out is to my friend, The Tattooed Ronin. Again, another fitness channel who uh, has done a lot of videos during uh, the you know social distancing thing where workouts that you can do from your home. And he throws in some really cool stuff that you can do with like cinder blocks. Uh, he's done some amazing challenges with like push-ups and burpees and things like that. Check out the Tattooed Ronin. Also, tell him that Sarge sent you, please. All right, so let's get into the topic today. If you are a prepper, if you are a uh, homesteader, or a gardener, or you just like somebody who, who likes fruits and vegetables because, hey, food is awesome, right? Food is awesome, right? These are six crops that I recommend that preppers grow. And we will, of course, do more later on, but these are six to get you started that I really, really think if you are new to preparedness or you've been doing this for a while and you just, you know, you're looking for, oh, what else can I do? These are six that Sarge recommends, okay? All right, first one is radishes. Uh, radishes are a staple on my property now. Uh, I had a couple, I had a hard time getting radishes to grow at first, it, it, you know, which is weird because a lot of gardening books will tell you that radishes are one of the easiest crops to grow. I had to play around with it a little bit. And the, the key is you really want your soil to be very, very loose. Loose soil is the key for radishes. Why is it a good crop for preppers? Well, you can do all kinds of fun things with it. Like you can do seed sprouting, uh, microgreens, the leaves on top of the radishes uh, are edible, so you can, as the as the radish itself is growing underground, you can harvest some of the leaves to make salads. the The big thing, though, for preppers is that radishes are one of the fastest growing crops, right? So let's say that uh, you know what hit you know you know what, and uh, the supply chain's disrupted, and you know you've got some food stores in your house, of course, because you're a prepper. If you don't have food stored in your house, you need to get on that, but you, you want to start to get some fresh fruit or veg vegetables growing too, right? So uh, radishes can be ready in 28 days. So it's one of the fastest growing ones. In fact, if you're kind of the prepper that gets into like bug out bags and things like that and the inch bags, which means like I'm never coming home, uh, you definitely definitely want to throw some radish seeds in your bag okay but for most of us we're more like homesteader preppers radishes i always always keep a large supply of radish seeds on hand uh we try to rotate them in each year as i grow my radishes you can always trade them gift them away to people if it's getting past like five years uh and um it's one of those ones that i can generate food really really fast grows in winter well depends on your climate it can grow in winter if you're in a mild climate like in the south definitely grows in the spring, summer, and fall. Okay, so radishes number one. 
I also have a video about growing radishes, which is kind of funny. You need to check that out. I'll put that in the link down below. Uh, as an experiment, I left some radishes in the ground. I just wanted to see how big they would get. And when I pulled them out, they were like over two pounds. They were huge. So check out that video. It's it's kind of interesting. We talk about growing radishes and some tips and tricks for you. All right, crop number two is garlic. Garlic is such a huge, important crop. For preppers and I've got some I've got tons of videos on it because it's a staple crop on my property as well uh, I grow it every year once you get it going so here are the reasons why preppers should be growing garlic once you get it going you're going you, you the for after you've grown it that first year you're going to save some of your garlic bulbs and you're that's going to be next year's uh starting cloves okay so once you once you get it going you never have to buy garlic again it's very medicinal it's good. It's, it helps you fight off infections and uh, has some antibacterial properties and it flavors anything you catch. So if like long term, you know, pits, you know what, you've, you've got a, a way to flavor your wild game. So, you know, if you've ever eaten squirrel and I have, I don't like the taste of squirrel. Hey, some people do more power to you. But, you know, you start flavoring squirrel up with some garlic and maybe I can make it palatable fish, you know, whatever. Uh, garlic is absolutely a must grow for preppers. And I have a video for that one down uh, in the links below too. At least, oh, I've got a couple videos about garlic anyways, but you really need to check out, uh, like I think it's called Garlic the Apocalypse Crop or something like that. All right, crop number three is oregano. Okay, so oregano, uh, I think I've got a shorts that's releasing this week about oregano too. I'd have to look at my timeline. But anyways, oregano has antiviral, antibacterial um, properties. It flavors up game again. If you had to, you know, if you had to eat a squirrel or a fish that you caught out of the pond and you wanted to kind of flavor it up a little bit, garlic will go a long way towards that. But it's a medicinal herb, right? Like for those those antibacterial, antiviral components of, of oregano, that's what we want. It's super easy to grow. And if you live in the south, it may make it through the winter. I tend to have pretty good luck with that. You can make a tea out of it. It's just, it's an awesome crop. If you're a prepper, you absolutely should be growing some oregano. All right, number four, asparagus. Now, full disclosure, you know Sarge believes in accountability and transparency on this channel. I do not have asparagus growing on my property. I intended to start it last year, but with the you know quarantine and things like that that were going on, I never made it out to get it, to get my, my starting... Um, roots and uh, by the time I was able to get to you know the nurseries and things like that nobody had it anymore so we're gonna try to get that going this year why is asparagus a, a proper crop well you need to start this one as soon as you can because it takes a couple years to get established but once it gets established it's a perennial crop and it's very very low maintenance and to some extent it will actually seed itself too because after the after the, the asparagus uh, you harvest it a few times during the year. That's the other thing is like you'll get once it's established, you're going to get multiple harvests in each year. OK, so you're going to get multiple servings for your family each year. OK, and then eventually, you know, you let it go to uh, to grow and it grows into like this fern like plant and it seeds. The seeds will to some extent reseed itself, but birds will eat them and they'll plant them all around your neighborhood. So it is awesome. <laughs> Uh, asparagus will give you over 10 years of production if you take care of it right. So preppers, you got to be planting some asparagus. Old Sarge is going to be trying to do that this year. Number five. Okay, number five, you have to grow some kind of potato. I don't care if it's sweet potato. I don't care if it's russet potatoes, Idaho's, whatever. Why do you have to grow potatoes? Well, if you grow sweet potatoes, I know for a fact you can eat the leaves and you can make that. The, so the leaves that are on the top of the ground can be used in your salads and you can do, uh, you can cook them or you can eat them raw um, but the potatoes is really what's important because you can use that potato slip, right? So you take the potato and you let the little eyelets grow out of it, and then you can use that to grow more potatoes. So it's like one of those, uh, kind of like the garlic. Once you get it started, you can have enough to kind of keep you going for a very long time. But the biggest reason is you are going to need carbohydrates when you know what hits you know what, right? So carbohydrates you know you probably can catch some fish you probably can catch some squirrels and deer and elk and things like that or whatever's around you uh you can get some minerals and vitamins from the tomatoes and uh, peppers and things like that that you grow out of the garden from the berries that you forage because you've been watching sarge's videos on foraging for wild edibles but carbohydrates can be tough to come by so uh potatoes potatoes have to be in your uh your, your staple crops 
as a prepper. All right, now number six is is a little bit of a wild card because this really does this this really does depend on where you live and what grows in your area. But you need some kind of perennial fruits. Okay, you need a fruit that every year you know you're going to get your apple crop or your blueberries or your blackberries now if you can grow more than one that's absolutely fantastic you need to at minimum grow one because you got to have that fresh fruit fruits for you know the glucose and the vitamins um, and you want to kind of get it going as soon as you can because these things take a few years to get established usually for bushes like blueberry bushes blackberry bushes you're looking at a couple years before it really starts to get productive strawberries two years uh, fruit trees can take like seven years to get going. So you really want to establish these things as soon as you can so that it's starting to work the magic for you, okay? All right, that is six crops that all preppers should be growing. And that last one there is kind of a wild card. It depends on your area, what you can grow. Uh, in my links down, in my description down below, I'm going to give you some links for some gardening products that I recommend, including the fertilizer that Old Sarge recommends. Uh, we're going to give you videos for the radishes and the um, garlic and uh, the oregano one, I think, should be out by the time this comes out. I'm not sure, but it's if not, just look for another oregano video. It's a shorts that's coming. And we will do more of these as uh, as time goes on. I'll give you some more. But these are six that you must get going now ASAP, okay? Uh, Old Sarge loves you. I want you to be food self-sufficient, and I want you to have, be able to provide what, everything that you need for your family. Uh, of course, you know I do foraging videos as well, so sometimes your garden just doesn't work out the way that you wanted it to be, even if you're an expert, right? Like we all, all of us who are experienced gardeners will go on Instagram, we'll post our best pictures, but the truth is you don't see our failures, right? Because why would why would we show you that? I will, because I believe in transparency, and sometimes those things can be used as a learning tool, but most people are not going to show you their failures, and the truth is all gardeners, no matter how expert they are, no matter how much experience they are, have some failures. That's why you also need to know the foraging, okay? That's it for today. Keep planting your seeds. Keep stacking your silver. This is Prepping with Sarge.